This is how I keep my food fresh on a meal prep on my calorie deficit. To another episode of the Get Shredded Diaries. If you're new here, I'm Amy. I do food and fitness content on this channel, especially vegan food. And today I'm going to be taking you through how I meal prep and how I keep my food nice and fresh for the week whilst on my calorie deficit. I've got to admit to you, I find it really difficult to meal prep on my calorie deficit just because my food basically changes every single day. I also have refeed days. Some days I have less calories to play with and other days I have more. And I just really need to be able to keep that flexibility during the week. But I need to make things easier because let's be honest, I am really low on energy at the moment. And that is one thing you're definitely going to feel in a calorie deficit is that you have less energy in total. So really, it's just about making small changes that make life easier throughout the week, making sure that you can pick things up quickly and on the go. So I'm also going to take you through all of the foods that I basically eat on my calorie deficit. I've got to admit, I am a creature of habit. I like to eat the same foods. So you're going to see a lot of repetition in the foods that I eat. I just like knowing what's going into my body and knowing that my body enjoys that type of food. So for me, repetition doesn't really get very boring. And if anything, I thrive under repetition because I know how my body's going to react to those items. So let's get started. Let's get started with protein. So I'm going to go through every single macro nutrient that you need to be taking in when on a calorie deficit. And I'm going to talk about the importance of each. So starting off with proteins, these are all of my protein sources that I personally use on a vegan diet. So starting off with nuts, nuts are a great source of healthy fats and also protein. They are calorific, so I don't have a lot of nuts. I mainly use them for my healthy fats, but they do contain protein in them. My personal favorite for a calorie deficit is walnuts because they tend to have a smaller amount of calories compared to other nuts, but also they're quite high in healthy fats. So I think for 10 grams, it's around 63 calories for walnuts. So that's my personal favorite. Going on to protein powders. Now, I feel like I'm seeing this shift of people wanting to avoid protein powders and substances that for me are actually really key and essential. So for me, I have protein powders every single day. As a vegan, it's really important for me to have these powders, especially on a calorie deficit. I personally think they're there to supplement your diet. They're not necessarily there so that you can avoid protein in your meals. You need to use them as a supplement rather than your main source of protein. But my personal favorites are ESN for the actual protein. This one is the chocolate mocha flavor. This is my favorite. I'm a coffee girl. And honestly, this is so nice. So highly recommend ESN protein powders. Then clear protein. This is like my juice drink that I have in the evening. So. The amount I use varies on how much protein I need at the end of the day. My current protein target is around 125 grams. That seems to help me maintain my muscle. I am going to look into whether I need to up that. I need to have a look at my trends on my Renfro scale and see whether my muscle mass is dropping quite a lot. If it's not, then I'll stick to 125 because I'm quite happy. It's quite a nice balance at the moment. So those are powders. Also, I do take creatine with my juice drink in the evening. Creatine is the most researched supplement that has shown to improve muscle growth. It's so important for your workout. So if there's one supplement that I would highly suggest, it is 100% creatine. Moving on to proteins that I have with my meals as a side. So TVP, this is basically just dried soya chunks. Love TVP. I've just got this from a health store. You can also get them online at Amazon. It's really good for protein. 100 grams is 50 grams of protein. So that's really nice. All you do with this is you boil it in some water. It will expand and grow until it kind of looks like porridge. 
I personally don't like to put it directly into my food after it's expanded in water. I like to dry it out and put it in the oven with some seasoning and it makes it like this really nice crispy texture. Almost imagine like little pieces of bacon cut up and fried. That's the kind of texture you'll get with baked TVP. So this is a personal favourite, especially in the evenings for me. Second favourite is seitan, which I make with vital wheat gluten and also some chickpeas. So I actually need to make some seitan today, so I'm going to show you my seitan recipe again. I have showed it on this channel before, but it's part of my meal prep, so I'm going to do it today as well. Seitan is so incredibly high in protein as well. It is really like a denser version of bread, so I don't really use it on the side of like curries or pasta dishes. I use my TBP for that. I use the seitan really on the side of rice or something, so it's kind of separate. There's no sauce on it or anything. And then finally, some tofu. I just bulk buy tofu. And to be honest, I use this a lot less than I use the other two, purely because I'm not the greatest lover of tofu. It's not my favourite. I do know how to cook it to a way that I personally like it. It is a bit more of a hassle for me, so I tend not to eat tofu unless I'm making a tofu scramble. So those are the proteins. And yeah, so let's go on to carbohydrates. Okay, so... These are my main carbohydrate sources. These are the sources that I use in my meals. So not actually anything on the side or pre-workouts. This is what I use in my main meals. So crumpets, obviously, I spoke about this on my last video. These crumpets are elite. They're five green crumpets from M&S. Honestly, so nice. I also make bagels every week. I'm going to make bagels as well today. Then also, rice i just buy these um ready made rice because it's such a hassle to weigh out your dried rice and figure out how many calories are in it and sometimes mistakes can be made there so for me it's just so much easier to buy ready made rice and heat it up in the microwave and i know exactly how much is in this one portion so i buy these every single month from costco i bulk buy them Rice cakes, that's just like a high protein snack in the afternoon if I fancy them. Oats, so I have oats every post-workout and maybe on a rest day where I want to be full for the whole morning. I personally love oats. The only thing that I would add to my carbohydrates is probably some cream of rice. I really want to give that a go. I haven't actually tried it yet, but I've heard it's really filling. So I'm going to also add some cream of rice. So that's the carbohydrates. So let's move on to fats. So, in terms of fats, fats are actually so, so important when training because they actually allow us to maintain our muscle. So a lot of people try to avoid fats and calorie deficit because they are quite high in calories and it can make it difficult to have calories left over for carbohydrate sources. But honestly, do not skip out on your fats. They are so important. I'm currently on around 50 grams of fats per day. That's my minimum because I know how important it is for muscle development. But I try to stick towards healthy fat food source. So these are fats that are better for your health, essentially. Walnuts, which I've already spoken about. Avocados. So avocados are so good for healthy fats. I tend to have about half an avocado at a time. Peanut butter is a great one. Also a good source of protein. I personally like smooth. And also, please try to get the 100% peanut butters because... Some of them have a lot of added oils in and the 100% ones don't, they're just fully peanuts. So it's really important to make sure you check the container. And finally, dark chocolate. So dark chocolate is also good for healthy fats and it's kind of like my nice snack in the evening. So yeah. Okay, and then in terms of basically everything else, those are my main sources of carbohydrates, fats and proteins. But obviously I have sauces on the side, I have some sweets sometimes, I have my almond milk which I use during my calorie deficit because it is very low in cows. I have my fizzy waters, my fizzy drinks and also my sugar free syrup. So all of those things together basically allow me to choose every day what foods I want to be putting into my body and what foods I want to be eating. So I'm going to do some food prep now. This is my way of prepping to make sure that everything stays fresh. So really, I'm just prepping my seitan, ensuring everything is in jars so they are really close and easy for me to get. And basically just making sure I have everything in my fridge. So my meal prep is actually going to be a bit different from probably the other meal preps that you've seen. It's not about 
making a big batch of food so I can warm it up in the microwave. It's about making sure that my kitchen is ready for my calorie deficit when I'm on the go during the week and when I need certain things. So let's get onto a bit of the meal prep. OGs here you will know that I make protein banana bread every single week without fail it is by far my most favorite recipe it's so good for protein but it really just tastes like a cake so I'm gonna show you how I make my protein banana bread because I know there's new people on this channel and I've had a lot of questions recently about my banana bread so I'm going to show you how I make okay, it so I'm gonna make my banana bread first so this is so simple, just 190 grams of flour in a bowl. Then you're just going to add 75 grams of your protein powder. This is just the ESN one that I was already talking about. Then just a sprinkle of bicarb, 100 grams of sugar. Then just mix all of the dry ingredients together. And just leave that to one side and then just get your blender and I'm going to add two bananas into here. Just a dash of sugar-free syrup. And then 150ml of almond milk. All you're going to do is blend this up and then afterwards put it into the dry ingredients that we've got here. So that is the banana bread prepped. So this will just go in the oven at 180 degrees for 20 minutes and then I turn it around and then another 20 minutes. Yeah, nice and easy. Next, I'll make my seitan. Okay, so the seitan recipe is really simple. All you need is some seasoning that you like, some nutritional yeast, and your vital wheat gluten. I just buy this one from Amazon. And all you're going to do, so 130 grams of the white wheat gluten in a bowl. Okay, and then just 20 grams of the nutritional yeast. Lots of seasoning, otherwise it's not really going to taste of anything. And then, like with the banana bread, just give this one a stir. Then we're going to leave that to one side and grab our blender. One can of chickpeas and then just add eight ounces of water. And then we're just going to blend this up and put it into the dry ingredients. Okay, so just slowly add your chickpeas paste into the seitan and you definitely don't want to over mix this otherwise it's going to get very tough and that is what your seitan should look like i just weigh this up and divide it into eight separate logs so you can easily pick them up so 
So seitan is all prepped. All I do with this is cover it with tin foil and put it in the oven for 20 minutes. Then take the tin foil off and another 20 minutes in the oven and they come out really lovely. The last thing I'm going to do is make some bagels. I have absolutely been loving making my own bagels at home. They're actually super easy, so I'm going to show you how I make them. And yeah. For the first part, you're just going to make your yeast. So just put 300 mils of lukewarm water. It doesn't need to be really hot into the jug. Then you're going to add in 19 grams of sugar. So this just lets the yeast grow. Adding your sachet of yeast. And don't stir this. Just let this sit on the side for five minutes. Then in a bowl, you're going to add 440 grams of strong white bread flour. So this is the brand that I use. I found that it's actually made the nicest bagel. So I'm going to stick with this. I'm just gonna add in 440 grams. So now this is sat for a while. You can see it's bubbling. So this means that the yeast is active so we can use it. And then you're just going to make a well in your flour and put half your mix in the well. Mix that in and then add the other half. So this is the dough. All I did was, after I kneaded it, I put it back in this bowl and then I covered it with a cloth for an hour to let it rise. Now all you need to do is punch the air out of this, shape them, leave them for another half an hour to rise a bit more, and then you need to boil them before putting them in the oven. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So food prepping is now done. Finished my seitan logs. Banana bread over there, which I did take a bite into because I just can't help myself. So nice. And bagels are also done. So yeah, that is how I prep my meals for the week. I like to do things from fresh and just have things that are nice and easy to grab on the go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe down below. It really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.